For most, it's merely a dream. Athletes dedicate their entire lives to training for that one chance to represent Team USA. What does it take to be the few who make it to the top? I'm Steele Johnson, U.S. Summer Olympian and Silver Medalist. Join me behind the scenes in a series that follows four U.S. athletes and what they have overcome in pursuit of the 2022 Winter Games. I want to get to the beginnings. How did you get into the sport of speed skating? I was originally born in Ghana and uh, I was supposed to come visit my dad. Well, I did come visit my dad when I was five. So my dad like made plans for me to stay, like he got all the paperwork. We were driving down like a road that said learn to skate and uh, he asked me if I wanted to do this and I was like, yeah, and this was for figure skating first. I was doing figure skating for a few months and within that few months, my figure skating coach, who was also a speed skating coach, told my dad that I was going too fast for figure skating, I should try speed skating, um, and I did, and here I am. <laughs> so it's not like the most conventional sport ever. Um, I actually started as a figure skater, and I started that when I was about three years old. I had an older sister who watched it in the Olympics and wanted to try it, so I've been on the ice like my entire life. And then when I was about eight or nine, I saw a Disney Channel commercial for short track speed skating wanted to try it so badly, asked my mom to have me try it. She kind of ignored it, thinking I would forget, and I did not. My first time trying speed skating, I was the only kid on the ice. It was me and like a ton of like 60-year-old men. Um, and my mom, when I got there, was like, she is going to absolutely hate this. Um, they like put a bucket on my head at one point. Like we're kind of just like, messing around with me the whole time, but I absolutely loved it. I grew up in a roller rink, and when I was eight years old, I decided to start doing inline speed skating competitively. And when I was 13, I got the idea to go to the Olympics and this, this dream, and my parents moved me out to Salt Lake City to, uh, to pursue it. And so I was out here uh, from 13 years old to 20. I achieved many accomplishments being on teams of junior nationals and junior worlds, senior worlds, but never the Olympics. When I was 19, I retired and I stepped away from the sport for six years. I was a professional cyclist. Um, I did that competitively, had tons of fun, great experience, put me in the, in the shape that I, I was able to come back in 2016. And, uh, and try for that dream of making the Olympics. What was the biggest challenge getting back on the ice and starting to prepare for that Olympic trials in 2018? The skating position, <laughs> the muscles that you need <laughs> in order to do it. Um, in cycling, you build up a, an amazing aerobic base. And so I felt like I could go forever, but in that low skating position, uh, those muscles didn't want to work anymore. So that was definitely the most challenging part. So you love to go fast, you love to be on the ice. Mm -hmm. What is it that really draws you to the sport outside of just the act of skating? The reason why I like stuck with speed skating for so long is just the fact that like, one, it's a community and like the sense of community that I have here. And like, um, I have lots of good friends here. Obviously I'm a black woman in a sport that's primarily white. And um, I feel like it's very easy for me to feel different and very easy for me to feel like I don't belong, but because um, there's like no, no one on this team, no one that I've skated with in the past has ever made me feel like that. And so it's definitely um, like refreshing because like there are times where I have felt like that, like outside of skating. So it's good to like feel like, like skating is like my home. Like I feel very comfortable here. So obviously I want to go to the Olympics, but beyond that, I really want to medal at the Olympics and I want to be a high contender at the Olympics. I think in the past I've always thought like I want to go to the Olympics and that was like the ultimate goal. And then I think the last Olympic cycle I missed the team by one spot after also having to get surgery two weeks before the trials. And I think that was like this time where it really clicked for me that like, I didn't want to just go to the Olympics to go to the Olympics. I wanted to go and be a high contender. I wanted to go and medal. I wanted to make like a difference at the Olympics. Yeah, that's incredible. Cause a lot of athletes have that goal of getting to the Olympics, 
But having a goal beyond that is what separates the elite from the rest of the crowd. And so you've bounced around a few different sports. What is it that brought you back to speed skating? Uh, the feeling of regret. Speed skating has been my passion, my love, my entire life. And stepping away without accomplishing that one ultimate goal was what kind of sent me to bed wondering what if. I think I was watching the Olympic trials, actually, and, um, and just kind of got the, the idea to come out and try it again. And I came out, got on the ice. It had been six years at that point, and, and uh, it just felt like home. It felt effortless and, and something that I knew I needed to go for again. There are obviously days where I didn't want to go to practice because I just wanted to stay at home uh, or because the practice day was going to be too hard and I was just like, hmm, maybe I should skip today. But I think it got to like a different level because um, I had to struggle with a lot of things um, with like my mental and my well-being and stuff like that. And it was like genuinely like, I do not want to get up. I want to go somewhere else. I want to go home and I want to be with my dad or I want to go like spend time with friends or I just like don't want to be at the ice rink anymore. And it like lasted for like two, three years. Um, but then this year is like really nice just because I have a better support system. Um, but then like unfortunately during the summer I got injured and it was a pretty bad injury and I like missed a whole summer of training, which is like the most important part of training. And so not being able to train with the team, um, I definitely felt like I fell back a lot. And um, when I did come back, I was just like, oh my gosh, like, am I going to make the team? Am I going to do well at the Olympics? Am I going to do well at World Cups? I've had knee problems um, here and there throughout my career, but like this has like been the biggest knee problem that I've had and like actually not being able to skate. And so, like you said, like being able to have like that support system is incredibly important just because I know for a fact that if I didn't have anyone behind me, it definitely would have been like 10 times as harder, like, or even would I even still be here if, if that, if they weren't there, you know? Someone fell inside of me and cut my hand. I was in China at the time and had to fly home the next day to go get surgery. I like was basically pushed into the spotlight um, and I didn't know how to deal with it. Leading into the Olympic season, I was skating the best I've ever skated in my life. Then going into Olympic season, I was not.